praise the Lord. Come on, praise the Lord, saints. Amen. What a tremendous privilege and a great joy to, to be here once again at the Brooklyn Tabernacle. And, and to be here on the prayer evening is, is a great, great joy for me because my family has been recipient of many of your prayers from the prayer band and all of you here. And I just want to say thank you. Uh, four years ago, my little grandson was born early, he weighed just over a pound, had, had heart issues, all kind of things, and they didn't know if he was going to make it. And we called in to the Brooklyn Tabernacle. He is four years old now and is strong, full of life, full of energy. I can't keep up with him. <laughs> Papa cannot keep up with him. Amen. Little Michael is strong and, and healthy, and we thank God for the miracle. And then just this past year, uh, my sister wanted me to thank you. Uh, she was diagnosed with uh, cancer, and uh, we called into the church again. She had surgery. They got it all, and uh, there was none in the lymph nodes. And she is rejoicing, rejoicing. And she catches, she listens to this prayer meeting every Tuesday. doesn't miss. She lives down in Florida. Uh, and she said, please tell them thank you for praying for me because God met her in a very powerful way and she is doing amazing. Somebody say glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. God hears and answers prayer. I want to share briefly from the word tonight about the power and passion of prayer. If you have your Bibles, turn to Psalm 63. Uh, again, the pastor's conference coming up in April, uh, we're bringing a contingent from Southern California for the Fan the Flame Pastor's Conference, and Pastor Jim has been so kind to ask me to be one of the folks to share at the event. And uh, so if you're online, pastors, bring your team, bring your church leaders. They will be refreshed. They will be fired up and ready to continue the good fight of faith in the midst of all that is going on in our world to make a huge difference. So the Fan the Flame Pastors Conference, April 21st to the 23rd, will be a blessing right here at the Brooklyn Tabernacle. Can somebody say amen? amen. Okay, uh, David, uh, in this psalm, uh, there's a couple things that really stand out. And I want to read a few verses of this psalm and, and then share a little bit about David's prayer life. You, God, are my God. Earnestly, I seek you. I thirst for you. My whole being longs for you in a dry and parched land where there is no water. I have seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and your glory. Because your love is better than life. My lips will glorify you. I will praise you as long as I live. And in your name, I will lift up my hands. Verse number six says, On my bed, I remember you. I think of you through the watches of the night. Because you are my help, I will sing in the shadow of your wings. I will cling to you. Your right hand upholds me. Hallelujah. And then I want to read a passage from the book of James, chapter 5, verse 13 through 16. It says, anyone, is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is any among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well, and the Lord will raise them up. If they have committed sins, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Hallelujah. You know, this psalm that David wrote, uh, commentaries say that he was either the time that he was running from his son Absalom who was trying to take the kingdom away from him or it was a time when he was running from King Saul but David was in trouble someone say in trouble yeah. amen so he had a real need he was in trouble and life is filled with trouble as a matter of fact Jesus said in this world you're gonna have some trouble but he said be of good cheer but I have overcome the world amen in other words, be bold, be strong, be confident, and trust in him. You will also overcome. Are there any overcomers in the house tonight? 
Amen. We overcome by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. So you testify to the goodness of God. When God meets you in a troubled place and he removes that trouble, don't forget to come back and give him praise and thanksgiving for it. Amen. I remember when he healed the, the 10 lepers, only one came back and said, thank you. And Jesus said, where are your other friends? They went on and enjoyed their blessing. I want you to know the blessings that we receive, we are to worship God with them. Amen. But one of the things that stick out to me in this Psalm 63 is David's personal relationship with God. Our prayer life must reflect our connection to the one that we're praying to. It's not just asking for petitions, but it's really about spending time in his presence. Do you enjoy spending time in his presence? Amen. I remember some years ago, I kept waking up at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, and the Lord would be speaking to me, and I said, Lord, I really enjoy this, but could we do this a little earlier? <laughs> ah, glory to God. He said, by this about the only time you'll sit still. Amen. <laughs> I was like, okay, I got to slow down some. Amen. Uh, because 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, that's, that's cool. It's always good to hear from God. Because if we're not hearing his words, we're not living. Man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds forth from the mouth of God. And, but if we discipline ourselves to always be listening, we can hear him all throughout the day. Amen. Amen. So David had a pressing need in his life. But running alongside this pressing, desperate need, I mean, if your son is trying to kill you and take your throne away from you, that might be a problem. That might be an issue that needs some prayer. But what did David say? He said, God, you are my God, and I earnestly seek you, and I thirst for you. He didn't say, I thirst for my kingdom. I, I thirst to have my problem solved, but I'm thirsting for you. I earnestly seek you. My whole being longs for you in a dry and parched land where there is no water. Verse 3 says, because your love is better than life, my lips will glorify you. Hallelujah. David had a rich connection and relationship with God. He had a passionate, vibrant, real relationship. My question for us is, do we have that kind of relationship? Because that's what gives power to our prayer life. We're not just throwing out some cliches and asking for a prayer and then begging and saying, Lord, please, please, please. But it's come from a place of sonship. It comes from a place of adoption where we're in the family. Amen. And so when we're in the family, we enjoy spending time with each other. And I know probably some of us have relatives that, you know, we might not enjoy their company as much. Amen. Hallelujah. But there are certain folks in our lives, we just like to be around them. Even if they're not saying much, they're just pleasant. They always have something good that's coming forth from their life. And we just like being in their presence. And, and when, we, when they're no longer with us, we miss them. And so what David was saying is, I just love being with you, God. I love being in your presence. Yes, I have a pressing issue. I have a prayer that needs to be answered. But what gave passion to his prayers was he was always seeking after the Lord. I thirst for you. My whole being longs for you. I seek you like the desert needs the rain. I need you, God. Come and rain on me. Do you pray those kind of prayers? I've seen you in the sanctuary. I've seen your power. I've beheld your glory. I know you're real. It's not just a story I read or someone told me, but I have experienced you. If you have experienced God, you are forever changed, and you are, as they say down south sometimes, you've been ruined. Amen. You've been spoiled. You, nothing else will do. You got to have that touch from Jesus. Anybody like that loving Jesus in the house? This is what gives power to our prayers. Your love, oh God, is better than life itself. Do you really love God that much? Or, you know, that pizza down there, the favorite pizza joint? I don't know. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> 
But he says, your love, oh God, is better than life itself. Have you experienced that kind of love? See, a lot of times we, we, we learn things in the Bible, we learn things about God, and we're able to comport ourselves and speak certain words that, you know, that say we belong to the kingdom. But is that how we live our lives? Is God's love better than your life? We cling on down here for everything, but our lives are hidden with Christ in God, the apostle Paul says. Is that where you draw your strength from? Is it really from God? Is it really from his word and spending time with him? Or are we drawing our strength from some other cistern that cannot give living water and we wonder why there's no power to our prayers? God did indeed answer David's prayer and protected his servant. How do we seek the Lord? It means to deliberately strive and desire as an act of your will. You have to, you have to really engage your will in seeking the Lord. Isaiah says, seek the Lord while he may be found. Seek the Lord while he is near. It's a deliberate giving of ourselves over to him to put our whole life at the disposal of his kingdom authority and his kingdom rule. It must become the highest priority of our lives to seek him, not for answers, but just to seek him. It's part of our worship. It is our worship. It is our reasonable worship. It's just to seek him and say, Lord, I just want to know you. I want to sit here with your word. I want to sit here in this quiet place as we were singing earlier about I come to the garden alone. I want to sit in this place and just be with you, Lord. Do you know that he'll really take care of your every need? He really will. He says, seek first the kingdom of, of God and his righteousness and all these things that you need, they'll be added to you. The seeking of the kingdom, the seeking of God comes first. Seek first God and his kingdom, and then the needs will be met. Seeking the Lord is a fervent searching, is looking for God with all of your heart. It means being completely vulnerable to him, not holding anything back. You know, he knows everything anyway. Hello. So we might as well let him in on it. <laughs> like, Lord, I really I'm having some really crazy thoughts about this person. I don't want to think that way, so help me here. I want to just think about you. I want to think about your goodness. I want to think about your grace. I want to think about your love. I want to think about your sacrifice. The Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. What does that mean? Jesus, you had me on your mind before the world was created and you already sacrificed. The sin in the garden didn't take you by surprise, but you had already planned for me. Wow, God, you already planned for me. I, I wasn't an afterthought because the stuff that happened that went down in the garden. No, he's the lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. And he says, I love you. I create you in my image with destiny and purpose. Oh, how he watches over his word to perform it in our lives. How he watches over every detail of our lives because he loved us before the beginning. Hallelujah. He is the eternal father, the everlasting God. To seek the Lord means that we wrestle with God. Remember how Jacob wrestled with God as he was fleeing from his brother Esau. It means to have your whole mind and your strength engaged in this relationship. How could Abraham go to Mount Moriah with no sacrifice with his son? It was because he had come to know this God like David. And that love that he had for him was more than life. It was more than his inheritance. It was more than his son. It was more than his family. Do you know him like that? When he becomes everything, then it gives power and passion to our prayers. Seek the Lord. Seek the Lord. It means to give up total control. You know, we don't control anything anyway, so <laughs> hallelujah. But we sure live in that illusion <laughs> that we can control something. It's like give up total control. It's like, God, I can't control anything. 
I, I, I have to trust you at all. I just want to be in your presence. I want to hear your voice. I want to sing your songs. Uh, I just want to commune you, with you because you have pleasant and good things to say. And even when you correct me when I'm off track, you do it with such love that it disarms me. Why didn't you yell at me? That's what Papa would have done. No. His love is perfect. His love is gentle. His love is kind. His love is faithful. His love is joyful. Oh, thank you, Father. From that place, we will be able to pray prayers that prevail, prayers that make a difference, prayers that break through. Hallelujah. He is the living God. He interacts with us. He gives us strength. Hallelujah. He wants our prayers to be powerful, but he wants our fellowship to be even more powerful. Amen. And so get in that place. Here at the beginning of the year is what the Lord has really been speaking to me about. It's just really spending time in his presence like David did and, and having such a respect and esteem for God that he really is your God and you really do thirst for him that your whole being longs for him. Do you ever long for anything? <laughs> yes. We understand these emotions, so if we're going to have a, a, a passionate prayer life, we have to engage our emotions. You can't be dispassionate and pray powerful prayers. Hello. So for the well, just a little too much emotion in your religion. Well, I say, if you had a real problem and you needed a real God for a real answer that you didn't have any real solution to, you get emotional too. But as long as you think you got something, another rabbit you can pull out of the hat, then you won't get emotional. You'll have a distant relationship. I don't want to have a long, distant relationship with God. Amen. Why am I going to hold on to my emotions? To give it out at the, at the football game? No, I'm going to give it to Jesus. Hallelujah. We're talking about praying passionate prayers that's connected to a relationship. And David captured it so well. Uh, your love is better. Your loving kindness is better than life itself. Hallelujah. There's nothing better than being with Jesus. There's nothing better on the planet than worshiping God and being with the Lord. Hallelujah. That's the way he wants us to live. There's nothing better than being with him. I remember, and I've shared here before, that my father was a, a praying man. He's in heaven now. I'm not sure what all God's got him doing there, but he sure could pray on this side. Um, but he would pray so that he would get up, he would start off on his knees praying, and then he would get so involved in the prayer that prayer took a hold of him, and then he'd get up and he'd start pacing while he's praying, out loud, very loud, Amen. And then his hands would go up and tears would be coming down and he'd be rocking from side to side. And I'm going like, man, this guy is really into this. <laughs> his whole being would be into his prayer. And, and I remember sitting there as a little boy just marveling at my dad, how he prayed. And as I've come to know the Lord over these years, I understand what he was experiencing. It was like what David was going through. He was saying, God, you, you, just being with you is everything. And when he prayed and the burden would lift and, and then he would get a cool drink of water and then he'd just be at peace. Hallelujah. He didn't see any answers lined up at the door. Amen. <laughs> Nobody was knocking on the door to come pay the bills or anything like that. But he had prayed through and that prevailing prayer of praying through because you've been with the one you love and you know that he loves you, that there's just a peace that comes that passes all understanding, that goes past all problems, all trials and all temptations and all difficulties. This is what it means to pray with passion and have a breakthrough. Prevailing prayer. 
The Apostle Paul captured this. He said, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. I can do all things through Christ, even in the midst of all the difficulties of life. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Hallelujah. Where did you get that strength from, Paul? I got it from being with the Lord. I got it from being in his presence. I got it from worshiping him and, and having his love become more to me than my very life. This is what gives impetus to our prayers. Prevailing prayer means that there's nothing that stands in our way. Hallelujah. Do you have that kind of an attitude that nothing will stand in the way of you walking out the purpose, the call, and the destiny that God has for you as a son or daughter of God? That can only come through prayer, through this passionate spending time with the Lord. And in the book of James, it says, if you're in trouble... Pray. If you're in trouble, seek the Lord. Amen. If we spend all of our time giving him our laundry list of the things we need, we're not spending time really seeking him. Seek the Lord, not seek the answer. Seek the Lord, not seek the healing. Seek the Lord. Seek the Lord. Seek the Lord. Because everything that you need is in him. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And this is where God wants us to live, not just, you know, slide up in the air every once in a while, but he wants us to live in that place. And when you read the Psalms of David, David lived in that place. He had a whole lot of trouble and a whole lot of problems. Hello? So he had to have a whole lot of fellowship with God just to keep his mind in the right place. Because our mind can go all in, on all kind of rabbit trails. But what keeps you steady, what keeps you stable, what keeps you strong and moving forward is that fellowship with God, that seeking of God, saying, God, I want you more than anything. And when we have that attitude, it stokes our passions. And then we're able to have prayers that really do break through. It's okay if people think you've lost your mind when you're praying. Amen. Because what's happening is your mind is being renewed by the power of God's word in the Holy Spirit so that it doesn't matter what other people say. What matters is what God says. What matters is what God is doing. What matters is what you're doing in worshiping him. Amen. And so when he becomes your everything, then everything else will find its right place and we'll be able to see life in the perspective that God wants us to see it. That's what God is calling for us in this hour. And so James said, if you're, if you're in trouble, pray. If you're happy, sing some songs. Amen. Amen. That's what it, when, when my dad was finished praying, then he starts singing. And he was walking, the rock, walking around the house, going up and down the, the little, our house was really small, so he didn't have far to walk. But, but, <laughs> but, but he would walk back and forth, and he would be singing to the Lord. Amazing grace. A charge to keep our hair. He started just making up songs, y'all. And I'll be like, wow. Hey, glory to God. I said, Dad, where, where you get that song from? Oh, boy, I'm just, just singing to Jesus, you know. Because <laughs> some of the words didn't quite go together. You know, it's like five songs and a mashup, you know. <laughs> but he was having a Holy Ghost mashup with Jesus. Hey, glory to God. Amen. <laughs> so he got lost in prayer. He got lost in worship. Hallelujah. He got lost in praise. Amen. And living in that place, I'll tell you what, it will cause you to have joy, unspeakable, full of glory. Hallelujah. And that's what I watched in his life growing up in the South in a very difficult circumstance. He always had this joy about him. And I remember when he passed him. A lot of people came to his service and said, boy, the earth has lost one joyful person in your dad. Because they said, we've never seen him mad. I said, well, you ain't never heard him pray. That's why he wasn't mad, because he was pouring all that stuff out to Jesus so that when he came out the house, he could smile at folk. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> And if we do that in our private, Jesus said, if in the secret place of prayer, in the secret place of prayer, if we pour out our petition, then God will reward us in the open. And that's what I watched through his life. It was in the secret place of prayer that he would just pray and seek God and do his 
praise mashups. And, and then he came out and he was just full of joy, just loved everybody, even people that treated him wrong and treated him bad. What James says is that the effectual prayer of a righteous man or woman is powerful. We are righteous because we know Jesus, because Jesus has imparted righteousness to us, amen? We're not righteous because we did all the right things today and dotted every I and crossed every T. We're righteous because God has judged us that way because we have thrown ourselves on the mercy of the cross and we have allowed the blood of Jesus to wash our sins away and we have been receiving and imputed to us the righteousness of Jesus. So from that place, we are righteous. So don't let the enemy intimidate you into believing that you can't pray powerful prayers because you look at yourself on your worst day. You say, devil, get out of here. I've been washed in the blood of Jesus. I've come confessing my sin and God has forgiven me. Hallelujah. And he cleanses me from all unrighteousness. Therefore, I can stand, I can kneel, or I can walk, and I can pray effectual, powerful prayers that put you on the run and cause the glory of God to be in my life. Amen. So powerful, fervent prayers. You can't pray a fervent prayer unless you get just a little bit emotional. Amen. I mean, I, I don't want to, you know, mock anybody's prayer style because everybody's got different personalities and so forth. But I'm telling you, if Jesus has touched your life, something is going to happen in your emotions because he sanctifies us, spirit, soul, and body. So every part of our being needs to be involved. Sometimes you find yourself rocking. Hey, you find your hands waving. Thank you, Lord. You find yourself moving. Your lips are moving. Ain't nothing coming out. Hey, Nothing that makes any sense. Why? Because the Spirit of God searches our heart and he makes known even the moanings and groanings and things that we can't even put into articulate speech. He takes it and he takes it right to the heart of the Father. And the Father goes, yes, I understand my son. I understand my daughter. And the, oop, I'm pouring out my glory. I'm pouring out the answer right now. Thank you, Lord. So it's okay. And I, I would say, parents, it's okay for you to be that way in front of your kids. You know, my kids have seen me cry and, <laughs> and pray loud. They go, okay, there's daddy again, praying loud. And I said, well, my daddy did it too, so I'm sorry, y'all got to put up with it too. Hey, glory. <laughs> but we have a good time singing and rejoicing in the Lord. But I don't mind uh, just letting God have everything that is due him. His glory is filling up the skies. His glory is filling up the earth. This year, God wants to move each and every one of us into a new dynamic of our prayer life that is powerful, that is prevailing, that breaks through because we will seek the Lord. Just enjoy spending time, take some time just to pray and don't ask for anything. You know, just say, Lord, I'm just here. Just want to worship you and just want to talk with you and, and just spend some time with you. And allow him to begin to touch you deep in your heart. There's nothing like being with Jesus. Uh, Pastor Burgos mentioned about being in the car. You know, we have a lot of driving in, in Southern California between our works that we have there. So I spend a lot of time in the car. And so the car has kind of become one of my sanctuary places. And so I'll be out there singing. Sometimes I look over and folks passing by looking like, what's wrong with this person? But I'm singing loud. I'm praying loud. I got my eyes open. I'm watching the road. <laughs> but I'm, I'm not just watching the road. I'm listening in the spirit for the voice of my beloved because he is my God. I seek him and his love is better than life. Hallelujah. And I've seen his power in the sanctuary. I've seen his power in the secret place. And I know that he's real. He's my God. And I know that he loves me with an everlasting love. And he will never give up on me. I can overcome. I can run through a troop and leap over a wall. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I tell you, stuff will come and stuff will go. But God will stay. He'll stand by me. In the night seasons, he'll stand by me in the morning. He'll stand by me in the midnight hour. He'll stand by me when I'm happy. He'll stand by me when I'm sad. He'll stand by when I'm grieving. 
He'll stand by when I'm having sorrow. He'll stand by when I'm angry. He'll stand by. 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 God will stand by you. Trust him. His love is better than life. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah.